What we're talking about here today is partners and financial consequences. In the second, more dramatic case, like the partner has taken the money. Now our client has police involved and the police are talking about embezzlement, but... Maybe it's the whole thing about what Billy Brandt said. You don't know until you don't know. Wait, no, that's, not that's not what, what he said. said. You don't know what you know. Okay. What did he say? What he said was, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know until, until you, you know. know. Bingo. But who wants to get that far? No. When he was talking about removing bats from his rental property and he Googled it, Billy and I grew up in New York City. What the heck do we know about bats? And maybe bats bat in the attic. Batman, yeah. you know? If you have never watched a really scary horror movie or read a really scary Stephen King horror novel, you're about to hear one about some real business experiences. And yes, today's simple sense is scary on purpose. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> Welcome to Simple Sense for Small Business, and boy, are we going to be sensibly small and business-like today. I don't know about small. I think it's going to be a big issue. I thought we agreed I was going to do the introduction this week. I kind of wanted a little spotlight time on my own. It doesn't matter because I edit it and things get moved around anyway, so... You ain't moving this around. Since the beginning, the onset, the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic disaster, Linda Ray and myself have made more than a few predictions about things that sadly have come true time and time again. And here we're blowing the trumpet for Linda Ray's prediction, not in necessarily a happy way. She said, if now is the time, that's not what you said. What I said, you if say? there's ever been a time to stop and review things that you have neglected or oversights, you didn't realize the impact negatively on your business. On your business, this is the time. And if COVID-19 has taught us nothing, mm -hmm. it has taught us you really need to pay attention to fundamental building blocks of your business, not the least of which is the really boring stuff like paperwork, record keeping, organization, mm -hmm. and so forth. Financials. And today's episode, Linda's going to share stories about some folks who are clients of ours and one one who just narrowly avoided disaster and the other one, sadly, who is living through a horrific experience right now. I'm Trevor and this is Linda Ray and welcome to Simple Sense for Small Business. Buckle in because we hope this is not anything that applies to you with regard to your business and with regard to ownership. Take it away, Ray Linda. Wait, are, am I going to take it away without being interrupted? I will now drink coffee. We have two clients in particular, and I know there are more, but they haven't had experiences where we had to intervene, in a sense, due to the EIDL situation and the requirements when there is an owner or more than one owner with 20% or more ownership. The only reason why we're commingling our EIDL consulting information from our other channel and Simple Sense is because often business owners want to start a business because they're excited about it and they know what they can deliver to the public at large, so to speak. And they have a friend or a family member and they want to get involved. Maybe they need the capital. Maybe they have separate different strengths and weaknesses to complement one another. But nonetheless, all is rainbows and butterflies. About their new About their new venture, their or new relationship. Or it could be just something very pragmatic where an entrepreneur is opening a new venture and a faithful and loyal customer says, hey, listen, man, if you ever start another venture, you're brilliant. I love this place that you have. Yep. I love this business. I I'm want in. in. And that leads to a conversation somewhere in the future. Or two folks just kind of are, are working a regular day job mm -hmm. and they decide, you know, I've always wanted to do this. And the other guy's like, yeah, I've always wanted to do that too. And they pool their resources and their money and they create a business venture as a side gig, which then becomes successful. <laughs> Here's the problem. Sometimes personalities conflict or various other issues on why the relationship cannot sustain itself within the business structure. Personality conflicts, difference of opinions, egos. Or just skills and knowledge yeah. about what the yeah. business is or inability to just show up and do the work of is your fair share. I think what happens where it goes wrong is as simply as it was to enter into this business relationship is as simply it takes to exit said business relationship. Not so. 
you can't let certain paperwork and aspects of the formation languish in the system. You have to go through dissolution process. Well, how about if you didn't create paper in the first place? Oh yeah. I don't know if we've so that's really our two bookends. Right of our story there we go. I was going to say I don't think we've distinguished between the two examples we're talking about. Let's call I, one the shoe store, and let's call the other one a actually. marketing business. So the shoe store, the cobbler has a successful mm -hmm. shoe store and he's got a customer who faithfully and loyally returns time and again and spends money and says, wow, you have the best shoe store anywhere. And if you ever think to open another one, I want to be a part of that. And so our cobbler does exactly that. He opens another shoe store and brings in his mm -hmm. loyal customer of the other location in as a, an investor, not really as a partner. Where did it go wrong? Wrong, Trevor, let's let our viewers and listeners know what happened. There was no formal arrangement in writing other than I think an email of some sort with some semblance there of was, something. The email was a mess. Essentially, what the shoe store cobbler said to us is it was a handshake. The proverbial paper napkin. But here's the problem. Cobbler has come to realize that his formerly faithful customer, who's now his investor in the new shoe store, is walking around behaving as if he owns the place. Not only does he know nothing about the shoe business, except he knows how to wear a pair of shoes. That's it. He is <laughs> That's a good uh, analogy. promoting <laughs> the idea that he is the owner of the place. When I say promoting, he's not promoting in a way that actually attracts more customers. He's yeah. bragging, but he's not doing anything to market. No, it's worse than that. You're forgetting about him going around in the actual shoe store mm. operationally telling... I didn't forget. I was getting to okay. it, but thank you for reining me in on my ramble. Yeah, telling people in the shoe shop how to cobble their shoes when he has never owned a shoe shop. I have to keep remembering we're talking about the shoes, which is yeah, not, not what really the, not the, what the actual real business. businesses. Yeah. Recently, with the minority shareholder, investor, partner, whatever you want to call them in the cobbling shoe store business, some drama came about because of the SBA EIDL program and other funding that the business has received. He had to sign documentation, which then caused this person to turn to the shoe store cobbler, who's a real cobbler, say to him, you know, we need to talk about our original agreement because you owe me money. And this caused a whole lot of drama, which ultimately worked out to basically get resolved over a cup of coffee, very similar to the whole handshake thing. But when our cobbler shoe store client came to us with this story before they worked it out, I, of course, lost my mind. I said, all right, send me the agreement. He says, we don't have an agreement. And there's some sketchy email. He has not quite resolved this issue yet. There's going to be some legal documentation to dissolve the existing business mm -hmm. and remove that partner with a payout. And it's going to be in writing this time, guided by us and by an attorney. But I can't tell you the stress that our shoe store cobbler client went through over mm -hmm. the recent weeks, really stressed out over what kind of drama this other investor partner could make for him, especially because there are federal monies involved. Yes. Forget about the sticky part of just how difficult it is when two friends get together. But there they weren't even friends. One was a customer. Well, I know, but then they became friends, supposedly. But anyway, it's federal funding, which leads into, into our next example. Take it away, Ray. This client from a year ago, he got funded and he contacted us showing us that he had a deduction of $97,000 from his bank account. He called the bank, found out a partner from 10 years ago that has no longer been involved in the business, but was still a partner and signer on the bank account. On paper. Withdrew $97,000 from the bank account. That he walked right into the bank. And took the money out, which was monies provided and dispersed to this business business owner from a federal program. The problem here is that the partner who walked into the bank and withdrew the funds, some of it in cash, some of it in a treasury check, he's a partner. He mm -hmm. owns the business. Mm -hmm. He's a signer on the bank account. His paperwork appears on all of the corporate documentation mm -hmm. filed with the state. 
And the EID alone. His name appears on the EID alone. Because when his name appeared last year, when I did the original application, I said, who is this guy? And he got me his information. We put him on the application because he's required to be. Our client is having a meltdown about having $97,000 withdrawn from the account. And he gets the police involved and his attorney. But our client is saying this guy hasn't been involved in the business in 10 years. Then why is he still on the paperwork? Why is he still on the bank account? I don't understand that, but what I don't understand and what we don't understand that we've seen time and time again, I guess to us, either we've been through it, so it's a valuable, expensive learning lesson that we've experienced, but these are things that languish and linger and it becomes a huge problem that takes up an enormous amount of energy and wasted time as and a result. Emotion. And emotion. You know what? I think, Linda, the thing that makes you and I different in terms of dealing with these types of operational issues is that we're a licensed insurance broker. Yeah. And I'm formally a licensed mortgage loan originator. And because we come from financial services backgrounds that are highly regulated, we have direct exposure to the consequences that if you make a change in something mm -hmm. like your address. You know, when it was my mortgage license, if I changed my address, I needed to notify the regulators right. in the states where I was licensed and the federal government. You have to do continuing education for your license. Well, not only that, but we also, because we have been regulated and different, you know, aspects of our respective careers. The other issue, too, is that we've been trained and we're prone to think ahead to forecast the worst case scenario. Well, with our licenses, if we did not follow the regulations with regards to notifications of addresses. I'm not even talking about that. There are specific consequences. I, I'm and not, that's, that's what we're talking about here is consequences. We're talking about consequences, but I'm not talking about consequences of us not abiding by the regulation. I'm talking about when we have to counsel clients because we're licensed professionals, we think ahead to their worst case scenario if they don't follow certain advice and guidance that we provide based on our experience and knowledge. Attending to the paperwork. The formation of the company paperwork. Consequences. Consequences. I'm trying to think of a simple example in your house, where you live, your home. You don't not take your garbage out. If you don't take your garbage out, it piles up and it stinks and it decays and it ruins your home. It oh, ruins- it attracts vermin. Vermin. There's so many different things that happen that ruins the comfort of your life. And here we are- And all you gotta do is take the garbage out. It's so simple to do. Just get it over with. Right. And you keep putting it off. And putting it off. procrastinating it. Making and excuses. You know, it makes it, and you don't attend to it. Hopefully you never have a problem. And then it's but a bigger problem. In the case of these two situations, the one disaster potentially averted, although the paperwork's not finished yet. In the case of the second one, it's two. done. And, Damage and is done. I don't think our client's ever going to see the money. Well, here's another example of how the second example, our marketing company, in our text exchange, he was asking for the documents pertaining to the SBA loans oh, and yeah. the SBA funding. And he was like, can you send me this? And can you send me that? Which is all documents upon completion of the loan that we provided to him and that the SBA provided to him. We already sent this to you. What are you talking about? He didn't even have, as of late, the most recent documents of proof of his funding. And it's like, how are you not saving this to a folder on your computer? Folks, you've got to do the work. <laughs> you've got to put the time in to attend to these things because all of these basic functionalities of your business have freaking consequences. Yeah. And if we have not scared the hell out of you, please call us up or leave a comment so we can figure out a good way to scare the heck out of you so that you get these things done and you don't pay the financial costs Mm -hmm. and consequences of your inability to attend to basic in attention to the, your yeah. intention. Yeah. I said in a text, I said, you know, I, I know this all too well. It's soul crushing, gut wrenching, heartbreaking circumstances that if you didn't do the work ahead of time, you're going to learn a very valuable, expensive lesson. You know, I think we've spoken about this before. There's an emotional component to dealing with this boring, mundane type of paperwork and functionalities of a business. You all got to remove this emotion from the process because you see what we're talking about in today's show is that in the case of both of our hypothetical, not hypothetical business owners, the shoe cobbler and the marketing guy, and that's not their real businesses, but they are 
real people, real clients. Real in, problems. Real problems. In both cases, I'm telling you, based on our interactions with them, they were massively, massively stressed out. Mm -hmm. The second guy is going through it right now as we're doing this recording, and he was hyperventilating yes. on the phone with us the other night when he first notified us about this problem. So you're going to pay an emotional cost. You decide how to deal with this on your emotions. Well, how often do we hear, well, you know, I'm just so busy. It's oh my like, God, I hate that. You, if you thought you were busy before, you're going to be even more busy if you let something go and you neglect something and it comes back to haunt you in a big bad way because someone is malicious. We don't even need to do a separate wealth and hellness. This entire podcast slash video is wealth and hellness segment all on its own. Be careful about your paperwork for your business partners. I'm Linda Ray. And I'm Trevor. This is... Simple sense for small business. We want to shake the sense into you. Mistakes we've made so you don't have to. So you can have fun in your business. Or not, because you didn't listen to us.